What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. Yo, check this out. The Pico Booper. This is the coolest Nerf accessory I've shot in like a long, long time, bros. Pico Boop. <laughs> I've shot this hundreds of times and it's still so much fun every trigger pull. Alrighty, quick breakdown of how this works, all the cool attachments, and I'll show you it firing. So the Pico Booper launcher is based on this gas canister right here. This is the propulsion or where it fires from, essentially. So to charge it, you don't get a pump and pump up air. You don't prime back a spring. It's not flywheel. It's powered by green gas. So to charge the canister, you get your green gas like this, put it on the little stem, and now you're charged up. There's a little nozzle right here, which is specifically engineered to mate with this little nozzle. Now mate. <laughs> and now this is charged and primed, ready to shoot one time. Now, what do you want to shoot? You can put on all sorts of different barrels. Frontline Foam has a bunch and they sent me all of them that they offer. So this, for example, is the Mega XL barrel. So this can just thread right onto the canister like that. And the orange part here is 3D printed. This is the barrel unit. So then to load the Mega XL, you just put it in like that. So now this is loaded and charged, ready to fire. To fire or to release the gas, you just push on this little button back here. That's where the launch thing comes in. It is currently attached to a griffin. I'll take it off in a second though. And this little launcher is just designed to hold the canister like that. And it snaps right in there. It's super easy. It holds it in place. You can aim it. And then when you want to reload, you can pull it out and switch out to a different canister. And to fire, you just push on the little button, which is over here and right here. So when you push on the button, it launches. It's so awesome, dude. <laughs> and to fire again, you would then get your green gas, fill up the canister, put in your ammo, and then put the canister into the holder and then pull the trigger. So it doesn't work like any other Nerf gun I've ever reviewed. It's gas powered, which is super rad. Obvious downsides to that as well. I'll get to that in a minute. But going over the design in a little bit more detail. So the launcher itself is designed to fit onto a Picatinny rail. I've attached it to the bottom of my Griffin right here. So this is the launcher itself. It is incredibly small. It doesn't require a big old plunger tube with a massive spring or a huge air tank to fill up. This little thing is the entire drivetrain or the propulsion. So you can put this 3D printed launcher on anything with the pick rail. And like I said, it's designed to capture the canister like that. And when you push the trigger, which you can use from the right or the left hand side, all you're doing is making this little thing stick out. And that pokes the little button, which fires the canister. Super small, but it's very clever in design. It's no bigger than it needs to be. It's not complicated or difficult to replace it at all. It just snaps into place and it holds it very well. So that is the 3D printed holder and the metal canister. And my initial concern when I saw this blaster was, oh my goodness, is 3D printed material holding compressed gas? And the answer is absolutely no. The metal canister is responsible for holding all of the pressurized gas. This is not 3D printed. It's like milled metal. I don't know how this stuff is made. And you can also unscrew the canister from maintenance, which I had to do a few times. So this rear cap here is threaded on, so you can just unseal that like this. And there's a little O-ring on that part to maintain a good air seal. And then inside, these are the moving parts. You want to be careful not to lose them. I experienced a problem with one of my canisters. It was unable to hold gas. When I tried to prime it, it would just leak gas out of the front. So I took it apart. I cleaned off the O-rings and I reassembled and it totally fixed the problem. And I've run into this issue a lot. After I fired, the little trigger gets jammed in there. So the trigger is essentially being permanently pulled. So you have to pry this open. But if you gently unscrew it, that tends to fix itself. But disassembly for maintenance and stuff is super simple. So if you have a problem, you can probably fix it yourself. And that's why this is the most expensive component out of all of this. The mount is fairly inexpensive, the barrels are fairly inexpensive, but these are 25 to 30 bucks a pop. But now that you know how it works, I'll go over all the different barrel options. So the attachment of the barrel to the canister is actually the same with all of these barrels. There's little threads on the canister which match the little threads in the 3D printed barrel system here. So you just put it on and then screw it into place. So this barrel is the Mega XL barrel. It's a very simple design. It's just a little tube. You put in the Mega XL round like that. Next is the 3X Mega Shotgun Launcher. This lets you front load three Mega Darts like this to shotgun gun all three mega darts at once. Next up are two shotgun designs that are very similar. They're both called the Quack Attack. <laughs> All the 90s kids out there thought that clip before I showed you that clip. <laughs> but these are super similar in design. They're designed to work with half darts. So you can front load this one like so. And Quack Attack, because that looks like a duck mouth. 
quack, quack. So a five dart quack attack and a 10 dart quack attack. The launch angle of the barrels is pretty much the same. You just shoot twice as many darts with the 10X. Next up, what they call the nuke. This is also designed to shoot with half length darts. So you can just front load just like the quack attack. And the barrel angles is similar to the quack attack, but the quack attack shoots them all flat. The nuke shoots them out like in a radius. So it just sprays in all of one general direction. And the capacity of the nuke is 12 darts. That is the nuke, 12 X shotgun. Next, what they call the sniper barrel. This is simply just a single barrel, but you could load an elite dart if you wanted to, or you can shoot half length darts. That is the sniper one barrel. Next, my favorite barrel attachment by far is the sniper 3X. This is similar to the sniper barrel just because it's a normal barrel, but there are three of them. And this is different than the quack attack because it's a much tighter spread. The quack attack shoots them out at such a broad range. It's kind of unusable for me. The sniper 3X shoots all of the darts in the same direction. So yeah, you could load just one dart into each barrel, but what I've been doing is loading three darts into each barrel. So it's a nine dart shotgun with a really tight spread. So if you just want to completely obliterate a target, use this. It's fun, you'll see. <laughs> However, I had a pretty serious safety issue come up with these because the orange part here is 3D printed, but these barrels are metal. It's a separate part. And Frontline put the barrel in there. However, it's not super tight. And when I overloaded the barrels with three darts, one of the barrels actually loosened up. I essentially plugged the barrel. So the barrel essentially became the dart and the barrel shroud became the barrel. So I could have potentially launched a chunk of metal through my living room. This is an extremely serious safety issue, especially with the power of this gas canister. That scared the crap out of me. So I got some JB Weld and just slobbered it all over the front here to make sure my barrels do not fly out of the shroud, flinging metal through my living room. I laugh, but that would be incredibly dangerous if you're shooting at a human target. Even so, the Sniper 3X barrel is by far my favorite barrel attachment for this blaster. But those are the barrel attachments. Frontline also sent me a little shell caddy right here. So this is a 3D printed component with a little belt loop right here. So you can snap it over your belt or onto your pants. And then it's designed to hold the extra shells like this. So if you wanted to carry your extra shells on your belt like this for a quicker reload, that makes it more convenient. However, keep in mind, I accidentally shot myself when I was using this <laughs> and that was not pleasant point blank because it shoots super hard. So keep in mind how this is designed. The trigger is exposed right here. All you have to do is touch that and it goes off and the barrels are exposed. And when you put it over your belt like this, it points upward. So I leaned against my counter and I bumped the trigger and I shot myself in the face with my own shotgun. It was so embarrassing. It can go off when it's not in the blaster. So if you get a shell caddy, be extremely careful and don't shoot yourself like an idiot, like this guy. <laughs> So I'll show you all the barrel shooting. Demonstrating usage and reload with my favorite barrels, the 3X sniper barrels, and I loaded three worker half length darts into each one of these barrels. Nine dart shotguns, four shells. Let's go. Triple Mega shooting normal Mega Darts. Mega XL Launcher launching a single Mega XL Dart. Quack Attack 5X launching five Worker Gen 3 Half Length Darts. I just hit that wall and that wall. Quack Attack 10X launching 10 Worker Gen 3 darts. <laughs> Same spread as Quack 5. Sniper 1X launching a single Worker Half Length dart. I missed! Nuke attachment launching 12 half length darts. <laughs> More went sideways than forward. <laughs> All of the darts from the perimeter just hit my whole door frame and only five went into the hallway. <laughs> Ah, 
Operating this blaster is, oh my gosh, so much fun, bro. The most fun gadget I've played with in, in such a long time. It's unlike any other Nerf thing I've ever shot in my life. I've never used green gas with Nerf before, but oh my word, the potential here, it's just opening doors. Oh my, I'm so excited for the future of this hobby right now. So a few things to point out about the usage demo. First, the quack attacks and the nuke attachment. Don't get me wrong, they are hilarious. They are awesome. They are super tactical, but not very practical for anything except for specifically horde control. And these are probably shooting too hot to be used in an HVZ game safely. If I were a zombie, I would not want to take a point blank shot with one of these. And why I say that is their spread is so gigantic. If you're just trying to shoot at one person, you wouldn't want this at all because you might not actually hit them. Like with the nuke, you're going to shoot everything in that general direction except for what you're actually aiming at. It's almost like an elite dart in that sense. And this spread is so gigantic. In my firing demo, I hit the door frame and only a few darts actually flew through. So if you have a single target and you're trying to light them up with a shotgun, these attachments are inappropriate. But if you have a bunch of shoulder to shoulder zombies and it's just a wall of people and you get the quack attack, you're probably going to get 10 kills. But that's a super, super specific application. So the quack attacks and the nuke is super, super fun to use, but I don't think they're entirely practical. The Mega XL launcher and the 3X Mega launcher were fantastic. It shoots the Mega XL fairly accurately and insanely hard. I've never been able to launch a Mega XL round so fast or far before, but I had good experiences out of both of these. Now to the Sniper 1X barrel, it technically worked. I didn't have it like jam or mount function at all. It just kind of seemed like a boring waste of this technology. This technology is so cool to have so much power in such a small space. Yeah, it has an application, especially if it had a longer barrel, then it could shoot a little harder and a little more accurately. So it works. It's just like, don't use this one. Use all these other super cool attachments. That's what this is for, in my opinion. But last, to my favorite, the Sniper 3X barrel. So yeah, it technically works if you just want to load in one dart into each, but I think this really shines as a shotgun attachment. I loaded three half darts into each barrel, giving me a nine dart shotgun shooting insanely fast but the spread was super tight. So if you're just trying to shoot one person and you want to guarantee a hit, use this. It's not going to be as optimal for a super wide spread if you're trying to engage a horde. That's where these other attachments would be better. But if I'm engaging someone with my main blaster like attached to the griffin and I just can't quite get him, then he runs behind a barrier and he's open for just a flash to use this shotgun as almost a guaranteed hit. And keep in mind, my test was at 25 feet. That spread's going to gradually get a little bit bigger at 50 feet. So that's my user experience with each of the barrels. Now to the chrono results. I'm not going to read them all to you, but read over these numbers. This is the hardest shooting shotgun I think I've ever tested. Normally, Nerf shotgun shoot way softer in velocity than their single dart counterparts. This thing shoots harder than them. It shoots insane. And interestingly, the Sniper 3 barrel, when you load one dart into each barrel, it's 170 FPS, which is obviously insanely fast. But then you triple load each barrel and it still shoots 150 FPS. That's only a 20 FPS drop to move from three darts to nine darts. The amount of power in these gas canisters is insane, which just makes them incredibly fun. And it's not just like a gimmicky shotgun. It's an actual war practical shotgun. So that's most of the information I can think of to provide now to my personal opinion. Overall, this thing is flipping awesome. My personal opinion on this unit is incredibly positive. It's no bigger than it needs to be. It attaches to any Picatinny rail. It's super easy to take off. You can snap in and out your shells super fast. Other grenade launchers might give you a more emotional response by like moving open that latch, a slide in your shell. This isn't quite as tactical as that, but it's way more practical. You can just grab the shell in and out. And this retention mechanism works really well. Even with the heavier barrel attachment, it never came out of the blaster when I didn't intentionally pull it out. So opinion on this is very very positive. What a clever design, very well executed. All the different barrel attachments you could possibly want. It's it's excellent. There's nothing I would change about it. I do have to point out a few negatives though. Anything this cool is obviously going to have some cons. First, the price. Getting your whole rig set up can set you back. Now, it's all sold separately, so you don't have to buy attachments that you're not going to use. And if you're short on cash, you can buy just one canister, which is the most expensive component of the whole rig, and then just the barrels that you want. But in my opinion, if you're going to run this rig, you're going to want a few canisters and a few matching barrels. So you can fire them off quickly quickly reload, fire them off, and get through a few. Because I'm not going to want to run around with green gas in my pocket and reload this thing while I'm in my game. And reloading the shotguns and reloading some of these is a little time consuming. It takes a second to do this up. So you're going to want to do that in advance, have them all loaded, have them all charged with gas and ready to shoot. And that gets expensive because the propulsion mechanism is in the shell itself. Because if you buy like a spring-powered shotgun, the shell is not that expensive, so you can have a bunch of shells ready to go. Because the expensive part is the blaster, which you're repriming on the fly. Setting up multiple canisters with multiple barrels loaded up, ready 
ready to go is, is going to get expensive. It is a really expensive component for the Nerf standard, but given the manufacturing and all of that, it does seem reasonably priced. And the cost is not just an upfront cost like a lot of our Nerf stuff. We tend to use Springers, which you recharge yourself, or LiPo batteries, which you can recharge. This runs on green gas, which is 10 to 15 bucks per can. And each one of these cans is going to get approximately 300 shots. I've used one and a half cans. However, I did not count at all. I was too busy shooting. But that's what my rep at Frontline told me, 300 shots per can. So that's a high reoccurring cost that's common in airsoft and paintball, but for nerfers, that's very new for us. We tend to buy our stuff up front, we get to recharge it, and it's cheaper in the long run. And once you run out of gas, you can't shoot the blaster. That's a huge con. So now to the question to buy or not to buy. This is going to come down to your wallet and your budget. This is an expensive thing to set up. If you have the money, it is freaking awesome, and you're going to be the coolest guy on the field. Everybody is going to want to come play with your rig if you buy one of these and set it up right. But not everybody in our hobby has this kind of cash floating around. It's expensive. And it's not even a primary. It's a secondary. It's a specialty blaster. Through a round, I'd shoot this four or five times. And for the price you're paying, you'd want to shoot it hundreds of times per game. So the biggest question for to buy or not to buy is your budget. If you can afford it and you want it, yes, buy it. You'll flipping love it. <laughs> but my perception of money and my value over a specialty tactical part like this is going to be different than yours. So you're going to have to make that call on your own. The next thing to buy or not to buy, this is a pretty serious thing, which I don't have to talk about a whole lot on this channel. Safety. I would only recommend this product to people over the age of 18, unless you happen to be very, very mature for your age. Compressed gas is no joke. It doesn't have an air restrictor. It doesn't have a barrel post. If you're a parent considering buying this for your kid or you're a younger kid, this setup could be extremely dangerous. How I have this configured with a single barrel is a gas powered musket. You can put anything in this barrel and the gas is going to launch it. I'm trying to say it without saying it, but this could be extremely dangerous. The shotgun attachment's probably not so much, but this scares the crap out of me. Especially if it's a young, more immature nerfer thinking, oh, it'll be funny, I'll just put this in the barrel and shoot it at my friend. You could seriously mess someone up. Now, the rig itself is safe. It's compressed gas in this metal thing. I had one go leaky on me, and it's not going to blow up or anything. It's just going to blow air out of the front. You're going to have to take it apart, wipe down your O-rings, and then reassemble. But it's not going to, like, blow up. The green gas is not dangerous like that. But if the human mistreats it immaturely and treats this like a musket, obviously, you know, that's dangerous. This isn't something I have to talk about on the, my channel, but this is an incredible incredibly powerful device. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. But if you have some money and you're older and more mature and you can treat this with respect and safety, yeah, definitely go buy one. <laughs> I think it pairs extremely well with the Griffin. It just like cosmetically works, tactically it works, but it'll work anywhere on a Picatinny rail. This is how I'm gonna use it in the future. And with a few of these preloaded and a little elastic pouch with the barrels facing down. So I don't shoot myself again. So that is my overview on the Pico Booper. Hopefully I've laid out everything you need to make an educated purchase decision on your own. Thank you very much to Frontline Foam for sending over this sample and all of the barrels. If you'd like to buy one of these, check out frontlinefoam.com. I'll leave a link in the description box below. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical.